And also today I'm just going to get this, um, these clumps baked into some cards. I'm going to pre-record it um, just because it's easier to edit afterwards and cut out all the fat um, as I go through this process, just make it more efficient. So um, again, just to reiterate, I've been working on this on live streams, putting this together, and then we're going to create a hair card version of this hairstyle for Unreal Engine 5, and we're going to plug that into the um, this hair. Uh, and before we get started, let me show you what I'm referring to in Unreal Engine. In Unreal here, if you look at our groom, so I'm loading up right now. Under our cards here, um, we have all these textures, right? So we need to, just like our generated air cards that we use with the plugin, and uh, I showed you in a previous live stream, we need to manually create these four textures. So we need to create a depth, coverage, tangent, and attributes. Attributes, you see they have root UV, coordinate U, and seed listed. So that can be a little confusing, but seed is basically your IDs, coordinate U is basically your ramp, and root UV, I'm not sure what they want for that, but the bakes from the card generator only gives you the, the ramp and the IDs basically, if you look at it. So that's what we're gonna do. That's your ramp, right? Dark to right. And that's your IDs. So we're going to recreate these two textures as well. Uh, tangent's pretty straightforward. Um, this is the directionality for the specular and the coverage. It's basically your alpha, right? And then um, your depth. So that's what we're gonna bake right now in Arnold. So back in Maya, um, what we're basically going to be rendering are these X-Gen descriptions, plus you need this backing too. So we're gonna need this for some of the textures, not necessarily all of them, but definitely some of them are gonna need it. So first thing we need to do is go through our descriptions and go to preview output set this to render, which I already have. Arnold, auto set your primitive bound. We need to go and do this for all of them. So I'm gonna pause here to skip and do all of them. Okay, I've gone and done that through all my descriptions, you can see. So next thing we need to do is set up a camera, right? So um, you can just set up a specific camera for this if you want, but I just go into hit space bar and I go into this front view. Uh, let's turn off our grid. And let's turn on, uh, turn on gate mask, resolution gate. Uh, and we'll change our rendering settings in a second. Actually, let's do that now before we finish. Okay, apologies, I have to step away for a second to answer a phone call. Um, set this to 4K resolution. Okay. Uh -huh. So this doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want it to kind of fill in all the way, right, for the most part. And then um, once you kind of get it to where you want, I just lock the camera so that way I, my mouse wheel won't move anything. I can still look at it from this view. 
I need to, but this is the rendering view mostly. Okay. Um, let's just start to get our render just to see what we get. I'm forgetting something. I'm just opening the Arnold render viewer. This is the one you need. For this default view, we, we probably wouldn't want the back plane because we don't want the shadows in there, right? We want our alpha. So let's go ahead. Come over here. Turn off our backing plane. Render again. So I'm going to pause here. And I'll unpause when it's done. I'll actually finish pretty quick. Okay. You can see we got a decent start here. So now we actually need to set up our rendering setup and shaders for all our textures. Um, I might redo this diffuse, but I think I'm just going to save this one out. Diffuse 01. And I like to save mine as Targa, uh, dot TGA. And he, if you don't, <clears throat> if you don't type in extension i believe it just defaults to jpeg so you want to make sure to type in your extension but i go with tga because it's like lossless you know yeah that's that okay so let's go ahead and open up our hyper shade window we have a bunch of junk we're probably not using but Our most important texture that we need is the utility, AI utility. Let's type it in. Okay. So let's let's do one at a time. Let's see what uh, textures we needed again. So again, here in Unreal, we needed depth, coverage, tangent, um, root, and IDs. So I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to start with the IDs first. So, so if we look at our AI utility here, highlight it. We have some options. One flat and. I believe we might want uniform ID. Let's try primitive, no, uniform. Gonna start with that. We're gonna <clears throat> come over here to our descriptions, all highlighted right. Assign material to selection. See what we get with that. Yeah, it looks like it's already already rendered. I forgot to stop it. But that's exactly what we want, so that's good. Check our display. We want raw. Apply color management. Yeah. Everything else good. Save image. Oh, save image options first. We want to have that on, not for necessarily for this one, but we want it on. Um, use display settings, sure. So it's going to use whatever we 
I have it here. I'm just going to save that out. It's called that ID. Dot TGA. Okay. So now we're going to do our root for the attributes textures. We already just got our ID. Oh, back in Maya, I'm going to open up Hypershade, get our utility. This time we'll do, actually, let's save this one. This will be our ID material. And then we'll just make a copy of it. This will be root material. Everything else the same. We're just going to change our color mode to um, what do we want? U or V? I think we just want flat. Okay. So for the color, we're going to want <clears throat> a ramp. I'd stick with linear because you can adjust this directly in the shader in Unreal. Don't make any changes here. Just stick with a linear V ramp like that. So then we'll just add it to our Material. Oh, here it is. AI flat. Okay. So An object name. Int. All right, so my apologies. It was not working for some reason. I just ended up going here and spawning a new AI utility, and then that was able to apply. I don't know why duplicating it didn't work, but I'm gonna call this ramp material. I will call it root root material. And for this one, all we needed was flat and V coordinates. Uh, I guess that, that, and that's it. You see, we get a nice root texture. Perfect. Save that out. Same way. Root.tga. Next one, you know, tangent, which is like this green one here. This one, I believe I will need the backing. So but we'll make a new utility. Call this one tangent. The reason I'm keeping them as separate materials, so if I need to rebake them, I can just apply them and run through them really quick, right? So, uh, for this one, again, flat. 
I believe. So V coordinates was for the root and then V surface derivative, I believe is for uh, the flow or tangent. Okay. And then I'll take this. And okay, we need to apply the uh, the backing too. Let's pause that. Turn on our backing. Select object. Selecting tangent material. Okay. So these are pretty straight hairs. So it's pretty much how it's going to be. But you can see we get some of that directionality in there too. You can see it more at the bottom where it's more curved, where it deviates from the regular green a little bit. It might not show up in the, I'm not sure how well it's going to show up in the video, but you can see there a bit. That's how it should look for the most part. If you have like very wavy or very curly hair, that it will stand out more. Okay, so I'm gonna save that one. Tangent. Okay. Well, next is our coverage, right? And our depth. And for these last two, um, I think we're done with the utilities. So they should be um, pretty straightforward. Um, really for this we need to go to our render settings so z gonna be the depth and I believe it's rendering right now. I think for this, we'll need to adjust it. Yeah, all right. Maybe point two. Maybe one five. No, I can't do one five. So we'll do point two. All right. So these are kind of the numbers you need to use for this one. And for the depth, I would have the backing in there. And then for the alpha, you want to turn it off, obviously. And we'll make adjustments to the depth in Photoshop. Uh, TGA. Okay, and more opacity. As far as rendering goes, that's pretty much it. It's very easy, as you can see. And we're gonna we're gonna adjust these a bit right now in Photoshop. So I'll save this out. Call this opacity. PGA. Yeah, okay, one, two, three, four, five textures in total, and two of them are gonna be combined. There's one more I'm gonna do. I think I think I'm gonna do the. Or beauty. And I could be wrong about this one, but I'm going to 
go ahead and render it anyways. It's a little blurry, but what I'm rendering with this one is our, um, you know, how we have the root up and down. So this is our, our like for each strand, the the roundness of it. Okay, save that one. Um, V, I believe it's V or is it U, U. U coordinates, okay. So the root is the V and uh, this one is the U. Those are attributes on the, um, the grooms themselves and I want a texture to associate with it. That's the reason I'm doing that, okay. So I'll pause it again and I'll open up Photoshop and then we'll do some final edits in Photoshop to get our final textures. So I have everything open in Photoshop now. Um, we'll start with our depth. But as you can see, I forgot to add the .tga at the end of this U and tangent one. I'm not gonna worry about it for now. I'll fix it um, offline, but just keep that in mind. Um, these, I don't really need to make any adjust or this one I don't need to make any adjustments for other than I need to re-render it and make it a targa but um this one I'm less worried about honestly I think it's fine because I'm just gonna make it part of the other our attribute texture anyways so I think for this we're gonna start with our root this is gonna be our attribute texture to go over here and copy this one, overlay it. Um, selecting all, I'm copying that and I'm placing this in the green. I'm gonna make this one black. Again, I'm highlighting these different channels here. So that's our U, it's our V, that should be our V. Now you know what, it's because this is on. Okay, let's do that again. Copy. Paste. No, it's not the one we wanted. Paste. Copy that. Let's get rid of this for now. Put in here. Paste. And this one. Black. And then here's where our ID is going to go. So let's come to our ID. Let's just pick one of these. So basically, our ID channel looks like this. I'm just picking any one of the channels to act as our primary ID. You see the I saw it needs is a black and white, so different shades for each strand of hair. So we're copying that. And we're coming back here. That would typically go into our alpha. Okay. 
or red is black, green is the U, blue is V, or the root, alpha is our ID. Yep, okay. So this is our attribute texture. We're finished with this, so we can save this one out. PGA, yep, okay, same, there it is. All right, uh, then we need to fix our depth. I think we need to reverse it first. So image usually to be honest, I just use the shortcut. So I'm just gonna hit control I. Okay. So I'm not worried. So it's control I, just so you know. Uh, no, I can adjust it. Okay. Looks like pieces of it are missing, but I think it's just blending into the background. I think maybe we should re-render it without the background. Let's see. What happened to my... Uh... We have this turned on. No, okay. Ah, why is it rendering that view? There we go. Yeah, I think this is how we want it. It might not matter, but I'm just this is how I'm used to seeing it. And control I levels. That doesn't look right to me. Yeah, maybe the other one was more correct. Okay, we're just going to go with this one. Um, Pretty sure this is the most correct version. And you can see parts of it almost blend with the background. It could be that it's clipping into the uh, the plane. I wonder, I have to check, double check that. No. Make sure we're not getting any strange clipping. Oh, yep, that's what it is. Okay, so we just need to move this back a bit. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna pause the video and re-render all my textures and then we'll be back in Photoshop in a second. I just wanted to show you really quick. Um, just double check like what I did, just to make sure you don't have any overlapping. You can get it as close as you can, but that was a mistake I made. I think it's probably fine now. Move it back just a hair to be safe. Okay, so I'm gonna rebake all my textures and then when I unpause, I should be pretty much at the end. But for some reason, my AOVs are not showing up anymore. And I don't know why. We have to render first. Oh yeah, okay, there it is. Okay. Okay, this is our updated depth. Try this one more time, reload it. Let's see if I can get it close to the picture. Everything looks good now. All right, cool. our depth, tangent, attribute. I think the attribute's fine because I don't think I had a backing plane for these parts. I rebake this one, rebake this one. I don't see any clipping in this one, so I think this one's good too. So one thing we might want to do to, because there's some like uh, stepping, aliasing, especially like on that. Okay. So what we want to do, hold on, let's see something here. This has alpha built in, good. This is going to be for placing our cards. Uh, so if you use temp GA, And these are, we don't need this anymore. Capacity, depth, tangent, attribute. Uh, opacity, depth, tangent, and attribute. So those are the four we needed. So we got everything we need. But I want to do one more thing. Go to our filter. Well, first let's select RGB. It's like our thing. It's going to blur it a bit. Use the motion blur. So I have it set to 90 degrees up and down, 8 pixels. You can see it's just going to smooth that over a bit. And then I throw a Gaussian on there too. 0 0.5. Okay. I already have that set up from before because it's something I usually just do. Kind of clean up these lines when they're super thin. If you make them thicker, you might not have to do this. Uh, just to keep it consistent, I do it on everything. Uh, 
option. All right, let's apply to the wrong thing. We need to flatten this first. Okay. Blur. Motion. Vector blur. Gaussian. I almost feel like the opacity isn't strong enough. Because the hairs are rendered so thin, the opacity is a little weak, I think. I'm just gonna do that. Maybe we'll do just uh, like that. So I get the feeling we might have to thicken them up in the actual X-Gen descriptions a little bit in the end, but we're just gonna go with this for now. That's good. This one's probably not a big deal if we don't apply the blur, but we're just going to do it for consistency. Same thing with our attributes. All right. All right, so now we have our four textures here. I'm just gonna make a new folder here. Uh, call it QE5, what do we call it? Page boy cut groove textures. Death. This is going to be coverage. Okay. No, it's as we debt coverage and tangent. Throw those in there. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. So I think that covers it for this one. We're ready to start, I believe, placing cards. All right, so basically, um, I have to my tools, there we go. Okay. I 
That's our texture right there. There we go. Scale. Oh, you know, we have to reverse these for, um, UE5 too. It needs to be from root at the top and the bottom. So, go ahead and close this. Did I save those? I probably should have saved those, right? Yeah, I have all the artifacts in there again. I'm not going to worry about that. So we just need to go through image, rotation, flip vertical, save it, file, image, rotation, flip vertical, file, save. I'll save. Okay, yeah, because uh, Unreal, the way it reads the binding for the uh, the groom bindings, it looks at the uh, UV coordinates and the roots have to be at the top. So. We need to do that for the uh, this one too. Oh, there we go. It fixed itself. Cool. I believe the way this works is this is the root, the little square. So uh, flip. Okay. Scale it.
duplicate. I haven't applied those updated, um, the updated alpha, which is a little thicker or less or more opaque that I just in Photoshop. So they, they feel a little thin right now, but one thing too, when you start placing your cards, I'll go over this again next week. Um, I want to change our transparency algorithm to death peeling max out transparency quality you can turn on transparent shadows too and alpha pre-cut pre-pass and help you have an easier time visualizing basically this there overlap it shift the orientation a bit i'm just giving you a preview of how we're going to utilize these that in a little bit and that's a, a clump right take it together So I middle mouse click this, hold it. All the controls are there if you hover over it, but I just moved this to the last. Because when you hit this um, extract all button, it'll ignore this last one for you automatically. And so we want to do all our layers on these, but what you want to do is you select a layer, right? Get these selected. Go to our options here, our bind options. Bound curves follow parent, yes. Bound to all available empty curves. Let's turn that on. Uh, duplicate curves from bind. We also want that. Um, anything else? Flip UVs before bind. Let's turn that off. Okay. So I don't know if we have it in this scene right now. Let me see. I think a little bit of stutter struggle right now. All right, I just paused it and I extracted some guides here from my extra description from the original hair. 
but um, I'm just going to move these up to get them closer here. These are a first set of working clumps, right, for our first pass. And they're pretty thin right now, so we'll see if that's thick enough to make this work. But we start from the bottom in. And then we have our options selected here, right? Now we want I'm gonna set this to layer zero and then I'm just gonna hit uh bind basically. Select one curve and one geometry. Oh. So I forgot to select this. Select this and select your first curve. Bind. Cool. You can see we have our cars bound. It's a little funky looking right now because we need to make adjustments. I didn't mean to hit that. There we go. You can select the original curves here because I need to add C. I need to add more points to it. We'll probably go with like 30. We'll make this pretty dense. I usually just leave this at two. And then to adjust our orientation. Adjust our twist. So it's pretty straightforward like that, honestly. So we're making the body, right? So that's its equivalent piece that it's working on. And usually I'll push the groom with the duplicate with the head off to the side so that way I can look at it and work on it side by side. But that's how we're going to go about this. So first we're going to work through all of our primary guides. We'll need to spend more time on this initial clump. We'll probably need to fill it in a bit more. Uh, I might apply the new, there's something we can do really quick. It'll probably help it look a little better. Oops, I did not, I did the wrong thing. Not what I want. Copy and this one. This one, okay. But thickened it up a little bit more, right? And don't worry if it doesn't look amazing in um, Maya. It's not going to. There we go. And... Doing one next to it. Right. Oh, yeah. 
location. We need to um, add this to the original curve too. So we don't have to keep doing that. Because we're going to optimize it in the end. So I like to keep it as nice looking as I can. For 50, why not? Hopefully this is making sense. We're just going to keep working our way through it. And we're going to do like a layer for the fill too. So that'll make this, um, the thinness here, less of an issue. Like I said, we'll probably just have to rebake it a little thicker with some tapering towards the tips. That's usually what ends up happening. But I want to start out being as accurate as possible to the room. Because we're pretty thin with the groom, but maybe we can go a little thicker. All right, so we'll work through this. We'll start working through this next week. Obviously, you can see this takes time, so it's probably going to be a, a couple videos worth of work working through these. Uh, I may work on it offline at some points too, and then go back online and record and show you the progress and make notes. But this is starting it from scratch and then we'll keep working through it. And then also there's gonna be a step here where we um, well, basically we're gonna take this bound card here and we're gonna um, separate the the original cards too uh that's the plan anyways and then we're going to make adjustments to those also uh on a per card basis basically but yeah we'll go into more details next time again if you have questions join the discord and i'll the link down in the description for that and then you can ask anything you want and then um i guess that's it for today all right thanks